All right, guys, today I'm going to try to pick this lock from Dennis Brass up in Canada. This is a Bricard, and I mean, these are really high quality locks. You can tell by feeling this key, super heavy key, all steel construction. This thing is milled. I mean, very, very nice key. And you can see it's a little unusual. It's modeled after the Zeiss key. So, except instead of pins on four sides, it looks like there's only pins on three sides. Um, I counted these. I don't think that there are eight key, uh, eight pins in this lock. There may very well be. I really haven't played with it very much. But you can see on here there's grooves for eight possible pins. I'm going to call that the top. And on the right side, and in fact, you can probably rake that. On the right side, probably can't rake that. But uh, again, it looks like eight cuts. And on the bottom, there may very well be eight pins in there. But I only see very, very tiny cuts for three pins. So there may only be three. I really... Don't know. This side is nothing. This side is nothing but a guide. So let's take a look at the lock. Uh, when you look at this little guide, the chrome outer casing here is really designed for two reasons. One, it prevents you from shoving the key in the wrong way. It forces you to fit it in correctly. So you put the angle part up and it will slide in. That is the only way it goes in there. And it works. It's beautiful. There's no resistance whatsoever on this thing. The problem for pickers, of course, is excess. How do you tension something like this? And when you pick it, because I would imagine when you rotate this, it's a lot like the Sparrow's revolver training lock. When you pick it and rotate it to 90 degrees, all the pins are going to pop back into place. And then you got to pick it again and then rotate it 90 degrees. And they'll pop back into place and you keep doing that. But in looking at this, let me slide it in and let's look at the actuator. So there is the lock. I would imagine turning it 90 would probably give you an open. So a single picking, for sure, at least, I guess it depends on the length of the bolt. It might be double lock. Who knows? But I got to tell you, I'm probably going to try to pick this. I'm going to have to make a tensioner. And the way I'm going to do it is try to use the guide uh, line right there on that side. I'm going to have to try to cut a tensioner that width, and it'll work inside of this little circle. And hopefully it won't obstruct any of the other three rows that have all the pins on it. Uh, and then we can rotate it. When I pick it, or if I pick it, I'm probably not going to go ahead and rotate it the full 90. I don't want all the pins to pop back into place because then I got to pick it because then the key won't go back in there. Now I got to pick it to get it back. I'm going to probably pick it, and if uh, if I can show you that it's open, then I'll relock it in the original position because there's a little screw right here. And I'm thinking if I pull that little screw out, then we can probably just slide the whole housing straight out of this this armored cover, and we can take a look at the guts of this thing. Anyway, before we go to all that, let's see if we can't just get it picked. All right, guys, it looks like I'm down to my last technique. This thing, oh, okay, I haven't really introduced this. Uh, this, <laughs> this will probably never show up, but uh, this is a Z-Wrench, and I just ground it down so that it fits in that side slot. And this is the last technique I know. What's happening is uh, I, I have managed, I tried uh, single pin picking it, I tried raking it, tried zipping it, tried rocking it, tried a variety of techniques to include even the electro pick. And what happens is, you probably notice I get a very slight fault set and then everything, it's game over. All the pins lock up. So I'm going to try the last technique I know, which is something I rarely ever use, and that is overlifting. What I'm going to do is use the back side of this uh, 
half diamond. I'm going to push all the pins down. And then I'm going to push all the top, push all the pins up. I'm, I got very light tension on this thing. Let me make sure I got all the bottom ones, get the side ones. Get everything shoved up to its highest possible cut. And it seems to be... I think we got it. And then I'm going to apply pretty heavy tension as I am sure that everything's in the right place. Get in there. And I believe everything is at the highest possible spot. So this usually is a technique used for uh, wafer locks or for lever locks. But I'm going to try now. I've got everything in the highest position. I've got, as you can see, in my thumb there, pretty good tension on it. What I'm going to do now is just start raking and very and release the tension on this very slightly incrementally as I rake. The idea being, at least on lever locks, hopefully on some pin tumblers, like I consider this to be, they'll pop down to their proper location. I can't push them up because they seize up. I'm hoping they'll pop down. Come on, baby. If you release too much tension too quickly, they'll all pop down. You just have to do it very slightly. Just keep raking. And hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, I'm going to get the ball peen hammer out. And that, I guarantee you, will work. All right, before we go full ball peen on it, let's try that one more time. Push them all well, they seem to still be up. I might not have released enough tension. And of course, this may not work. All right, they're all in the same kind of full up. And there we go. Look at that. I have a, that's 45 degrees right there. Let me hold the face of the lock up here. I think you can see that is now open. <laughs> Thank goodness, Beatles. I didn't really want to go the ball peen. I'm going to turn this on the back. I'm going to rotate it back to where it belongs, I think. Counterclockwise, I think it was. Otherwise, we've got to pick this. I can't get a grip on the back. Let me find that Z-wrench and rotate him back to his locked position there. All right, because I want to open him up. I want to see what's inside of here because it really does act like security pins because as soon as I got... Uh, a single pin would give me a nice solid click and I'll get a partial fault set, all the other pins locked up. Totally seized up, would not, no spring tension, no nothing, totally resistant to both the, uh, uh, to the rake and it just wouldn't allow me to get anything else up. So I think if I just pull this out, if I can find a screw stick the right size, we can take a look, see what we got here. Let me try to push it out with the key. Try to just twist it a little bit. Come on, come out of there. Let me try to push it out with a screw stick. Nothing. All right, let me try to grab it with a pair of pliers. Nothing. Come out of there. I wonder, well, if I put the key in, and if I turn it, the core would probably come out, but the key will not allow it to come out. So that's not going to work. What are you thinking, Bill? That is not... Guys, I don't know what to tell you. We're not going to be able to gut this today, I think. Anyway, there you go. The Ricard. I wish we could have got it gutted. I'm not going to claim a successful opening on all Bricards, but at least on this one, the overlift technique work. I get this as proof that you need a repertoire. You need a list of things going from the 
the highest chance of success, for example, raking is often my highest chance of success. I might start out with raking, and then if I get a fault set, then I'll go to single pin picking. And then if that doesn't work, I might try zipping it or raking or, or rocking it or some other technique. Um, to be honest, overlifting was in the very bottom of my bag of tricks. But in this case, it paid off to pull it out. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Dennis, thank you for this Ricard. Thanks, guys.